Hello Year 3, this is our geography lesson this afternoon. Let's check you've got what you need. So you need your back of your English book to do your writing today, a pencil and a ruler. Check you've got those things. Can you jot down the data and allow to get you started? Underline the ruler and just consider the, uh, the question below. It says, what sort of settlement do you think the Celts lived in? Have a think, do that now. OK, I'm going to try and play you a video now with the sound on, um, which will give us some information which helps us decide on what sort of settlement the Celts lived in. So bear with me. Let's have a watch. Listen out carefully. These hill forts were once a common sight across Britain. We can still see evidence of some of them today. This is Maiden Castle, an Iron Age hill fort in Dorset, which historians believe was built almost 3,000 years ago. In Britain, the Iron Age began in about 800 BC, and as its name suggests, it came about when people discovered how to produce iron. Iron allowed people to make better tools for farming and daily life, as well as better weapons. These new weapons were stronger than stone or Bronze Age weapons. And of course, with more dangerous weapons, people needed new ways to defend themselves from attack. At this time, most people across Britain and Ireland lived in Celtic tribes. To protect themselves, they built forts on the tops of hills. Summer hill forts were almost like small towns that were full of wooden houses with thatched roofs made of straw. These hill forts gave the tribes an excellent view, allowing them to see enemies coming from miles away. To make it difficult for enemies to attack, tribes surrounded their hill forts with huge mounds of earth, ditches and wooden walls. Being above your enemy was an advantage in battle. <laughs> hill forts were common across Britain until the Romans invaded in AD 43. The Romans had their own ideas of how things should be done. Okay, let's go back to our PowerPoint. So, what did you think? Where, what sort of settlement do they live in? So, it said they live in settlements smaller than towns. So we're looking at villages or hamlets. It was actually a little bit more specific, wasn't it, as to where they lived? And it says that they lived in, where was it? Hill forts because they were based on hills, weren't they? So let's have a look um, at a map of the UK. Now, here are some places where Celtic settlements would have been. Um, thinking about our learning from last geography lesson, what countries within the UK were the Cel Celtic settlements? Have a think, which countries were they settled in? Pause the video and do that now. Yeah, so we've got quite a few settlements in this country. This is the country of England, which we talked about last time. We've got settlements in Wales and we've got settlements in Scotland. Last lesson, we were thinking of the countries that made up the UK and we know that Northern Ireland is a country as well. But as you can see on the map, we haven't got Celtic settlements there. Interestingly, we live about oh, about here, don't we, on the map? And so there are actually Celtic settlements very, very close to where we live now. They used to be. Somerset, that's certainly a place that's near us. So let's have a closer look at a settlement here. So um, this is a, an example of a hill fort, okay? Um, you might want to pause the video and just have a closer look. I wonder what human features you can spot. Bear in mind the human features will be very different. They look very different to what we have now. So pause the video and have a think. OK, um, yeah, so for the most part, we've got these round houses. Um, huts were, were round with a thatched roof. Have you ever seen a house with a thatched roof? There are some still around in the UK now. So you might have come across some before. Not many anymore, unfortunately. Um, these bits here are um, are pens, so they're where the cattle um, grazed. That's why they kept them safe. And here, really interestingly, we've got these little huts, 
and it says villagers sawed their food in rooms on stilts to stop it being eaten by rats. So isn't that clever? So the rats couldn't get in. So there aren't a huge amount of uh, human features in a Celtic settlement. As we know, they are small. We're going to today be really honing in on the round houses. So we're going to really think about the, the Celtic home. So I'm going to read you a little bit of information. Just listen carefully. The Celts lived in round houses. These were made of wattle and daub, a mixture of straw, wood and mud. There would be a fire in the middle of the house, which was one large room, and the smoke escaped from a small hole in the roof. There were no windows, as they needed to keep the heat in. The roof was made from straw thatch. And we've got um, a Celtic man here, and he's telling us um, why um, they were placed on hills, these settlements. Our hill forts were on higher ground as it made it easier to defend our tribe against attacks from other tribes. We could spot attackers coming and launch weapons such as arrows with iron tips. I'm going to play you another video now um, and it's, it's a little bit more about um, life um, in a Celtic tribe. A little bit more, it tells us a little bit more about the round houses as well. So, uh, oh. Here we go. Oh, sorry, one more thing. Have to make sure the sound's on for you. This is Butzer Ancient Farm, the 30-year-old project researching the British Iron Age, the time of the Celts. When people come to Butzer, they learn a lot about the Celts and the Celtic way of life. Before the Romans came, we're looking at a very different sort of countryside, covered in small settlements. It was made up of fields and woods and pastures. So try and put in your mind this sort of patchwork of different colours of greens scattered across the whole countryside. The Celts were a warrior-based society, but they were very, very good farmers, and this led to an enormous amount of trade Life in a Celtic village revolved around the production of food. If they weren't able to produce food, they starved. It's very seasonal work, and even the building and maintenance of houses depended on doing it at the right time of year. During the summer, all effort was spent on looking after the crops. In the autumn, that was the time to sort the animals out and decide which ones you wanted to keep through the winter. And during the winter, that was the time to cut the wood there is very little evidence of Celtic houses in modern times because they were built out of wood and straw and that all rots away to nothing. I'm just going to pause the video there for us. I hope that gave us some more interesting information. It's quite interesting to see how calm and how life really used to be. OK, I'm going to read you some information now. I really want you to listen in because in a moment you're going to have a go at drawing a, a roundhouse. OK, so really listen to this information. It's going to help you with your drawing. There was a pole in the centre of the roundhouse which supported other poles that spread out to form the roof. The roof was thatched with grass or straw. The door of the roundhouse was decorated with carvings and plants or herbs that would keep evil spirits away. The roundhouse was one large room and more than one family could stay there. A wealthy family might have more than one roundhouse. The roundhouse was lit and heated by a fire built into a clay pot in the centre of the floor. The fire burned all the time. A metal cauldron would hang above the fire for cooking food. Food that had been preserved in salt would hang from the roof. Have a think about what sort of food would hang from the roof, with the, knowing that they were farmers. There were no windows in a roundhouse. Around the walls of the roundhouse were benches covered with animal skins, which would have been used for sleeping on. Animal skins covered the floor. Other furniture, such as low tables or chests, would have been made out of wood. The Celts would have carved decorations on their furniture. 
there may have been a loom in the roundhouse for weaving. Do you remember what we talked about Gandhi making his own clothes and that um, almost not machine, but um, spinning wheel he was using? It's a bit like that. It's a bit like that. Another way of making your clothes. The, the Celts wove their clothes. They were usually brightly coloured and patterned. So use that information to help you with your activity that you're going to do now. I'd like you to draw and label a Celtic roundhouse. Use the pictures here if that's helpful for you. I'd like you to remember to include and label a thatched pointed roof, wattle and daub walls, that's the, um, the mud sort of concoction that they stuck the bits together with and what made the walls of the roundhouse. Herbs or plants hanging at the door, and a door with Celtic carvings on it. Can you see here in this picture, there's some patterns. That's a bit like the Celtic carvings. You might want to have a look online if you want to be a bit more specific about what Celtic carvings look like. Brilliant. I'd love to see this on Dojo. Please post um, well done for today. See you next time.